Hey guys, I wanted to make a, just a quick video today, just a little fire alarm help short thing. Showing kind of how to wire up a standard fire alarm. Most of them are going to be a similar process. Um, so let's get to it. Right now I have this old guy. This is a Space Age electronics uh, light plate with a... Uh, I think it's also a space age horn model numbers are slipping my mind so if I remember I'll put them in here um, and the reason I was putting this up was uh, I want to just make a quick video with it uh, coming later this week because my regular programming I wanted um, didn't really end up working out due to a fluke with something else that was an issue with the smoke detector that I was working on so I'm gonna have to push that video back to next week probably um luckily i'll be home from school next week so here's what i got it's kind of hard to tell but we've got a bunch of wires here we've got a positive and negative from the light plate a positive and negative from the horn and the positive and negative from the panel so this wire runs down with all of these wires through this little chase where the control module is and they're on NAC1, so NAC1 positive, NAC1 negative. So those go up there. Now they're not hooked up right now, obviously. Um, and that being said, the system is also in trouble because I don't have a resistor on it. Now, this is a four wire alarm, which means it needs both these wires separate from these wires to function. That's just the way it's designed to be set up because it's a light plate. Uh, more modern alarms are generally two wire alarms and they're set up to be um, syncable so you can silence and have that selective silence. Um, now most panels anyway don't want you to do selective silence for most jurisdictions because it got pulled out of uh, NFPA 72. So just realizing how hard this is going to be to do with one hand. But um, what we've got here, we're going to take our positive and negative from the panel. I want to start with our positives. So we're going to take our positives of all positives and we want to put them on there. So all three red wires are going to go into a wire cap together. And since I can't do that while well, just holding the camera, I'm going to pause it and uh, get to it there. Okay, so what I went ahead and did here while I paused the video is I put all the black wires into one wire cap and all the red ones into one wire cap. Now what I forgot to mention is most modern alarms, as you can tell this is not modern, this is an old alarm, um, they need, they have screw terminals. So you would wire it up to screw terminals rather than putting these wire nuts on it. Um, that is like 9 times out of 10, probably 99 times out of 100, so 9.9 .9 times out of 10. I could make up ratios all day. doesn't matter. New alarms, more often than not, are going to have screw terminals on you to make your life really easy, and I think it might even be required now. So probably all new alarms, screw terminals, make your life easy. They're labeled positive and negative. If you don't know, black is negative, red is positive, almost always but I recommend you use a meter to check if you don't know. Now, we've got that wired up, and that is how you would wire up a fire alarm horn and strobe. Like I said, some only need two wires. Don't need to have this, this stuff. It'd go right into screw terminals. And you know what, I'll show you that on one of my newer alarms. So, the um, thing here is positive wire, the red wire goes to the positive on the alarm, the black wire goes there, 24 volts of power gets to it. That's what sets these guys off. Very simple system, basic circuitry. That's how conventional notification works. You could go even further to go into um, Simplex's new addressable notification where you, know, you don't want to go into that. That's another video for another day. That's the basics of wiring up a horn strobe.